Good morning. Happy Easter. Je voudrais vous souhaiter une joyeuse Pâques. Truly, we are so delighted to have so many people here this morning. Thank you all for coming. If you are sitting back in the pews, we have places up here and you'll get to see the action better if you decide to relocate or you can stay there. Yes, please do come. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day when God shines a way out of pandemic's worry and the grace offers bouquets of good news. This is a day the Lord sings songs of wonder to awaken us and life teaches us new dance steps. This is a day the Lord has made, the day when hope pushes aside the stone of our months of fear, when love takes our hand so we can walk together into life. Let us worship God. As your word declares, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We give thanks to you and bless your holy name. Your word also says that the one who offers thanksgiving as a sacrifice glorifies you, and the one who orders his, rightly, his ways rightly before you will see the salvation of God. Today is a day that we are more mindful than ever that Jesus died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day. 
Being mindful of this, we confess that we have sinned against you in your words and deeds, and we know that you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, we thank you, Father, that when Jesus rose, we rose with him, and we are now free from sin's power and the power that fear once had over us. We are grateful that we can celebrate this freedom today by learning to love you more and touch the world with the power of love that lives through us in your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell the Lord how thankful you are, because he is kind and always merciful. Open the gates of justice, and I will enter and tell the Lord how thankful I am. I praise the Lord for answering my prayers and saving me. The Lord has done this, and it is amazing to us. Tell the Lord how thankful you are, because he is the king and always merciful. We'll ask the Lord to save us. We'll sincerely ask the Lord to let us win. The Lord is our God, and he has given us life. Start the celebration. March with palm branches all the way to the altar.
Alors Pierre, ouvrant la bouche, dit, « En vérité, je reconnais que Dieu ne fait point exception des personnes, mais qu'en toute nation, celui qui le craint et qui pâtit la justice lui était agréable. » Il a envoyé la parole aux fils d'Israël en leur annonçant la paix par Jésus-Christ, qui est le Seigneur de tous. Vous savez ce qui est arrivé dans toute la Judée, après avoir commencé à gagner à la suite du baptême que Jean a prêché. Vous savez comment Dieu a honte du Saint-Esprit et de force Jésus de Nazareth, qui allait de lieu en lieu faisant du bien, en guérissant tous ceux qui étaient sous l'empire du diable, car Dieu était avec lui. Nous sommes témoins de tout ce, qui, tout ce qui a fait dans ce pays des Juifs et à Jérusalem. Ils l'ont tué en le pendant au bois. Dieu l'a ressuscité le troisième jour. Il a permis qu'il a apparu non à tout le peuple, mais aux témoins choisis d'avance par Dieu. À nous qui avons mangé et bu avec lui, et après ressuscité des morts. Et Jésus a ordonné de percher au peuple détesté. Je sais qu'il a été établi par Dieu juge des vivants et des morts. Tous les pauvres rendent de, de lui témoignage de quiconque croit en lui, reçoit par son nom pardon des péchés. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, anyone who fears him and practices righteousness is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he, sent, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did for both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. Après le sabbat, à l'aube du premier jour de la semaine, Marie de Magdala et l'autre Marie allèrent voir le sépulcre. Et voici, il y eut un grand tremblement de terre, car une ange du Seigneur descendit du ciel, vint rouler la pierre et s'assit dessus. Son aspect était comme l'éclair, et son vêtement blanc comme la neige. Les gardes tremblèrent de peur et devinrent comme morts. Mais l'ange prit la parole et dit aux femmes, « Pour vous, ne ressuscitez comme il l'avait dit. » Venez, voyez le lieu où il était couché, et allez promptement dire à ses disciples qu'il est ressuscité des morts. Et voici, il vous précède en Galilée. C'est là que vous le verrez. Voici, je vous l'ai dit. Elles s'éloignèrent promptement du sépulcre, avec crainte et avec une grande joie, et elles coururent porter la nouvelle aux disciples. Et voici, Jésus vint à leur rencontre et dit, « Je vous salue. » Elles s'approchèrent pour saisir ses pieds, et elles se prosternèrent devant lui. Alors Jésus leur dit, « Ne craignez pas, allez dire à mes frères de se rendre en Galilée, c'est là qu'ils me le verront. » After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his cloth clothing white as snow. For fear, him the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been risen. 
comes to the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Introducing a new um, play this year, so bear with us. <laughs> We've gone through it twice yesterday. Uh, we thought it was time for a change, so uh, now you can all take your places and get ready for your dramatization. All right. Imagine yourself in the worst of all possible situations. Imagine yourself as one of the disciples. Or as one of the women who followed Jesus. Imagine that he is no longer among you because he is dead. You saw him die. You saw them bury the, him in the tomb. There is no doubt. There is no hope. There is no future. You huddle together behind a locked door, fearing that those who tortured and killed him will come and find you next. What will happen to you, to your family, to your friends? There is no doubt. There is no hope. There is no future. You heard him say when he was alive that the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. But you have forgotten those words, or at least they told they hold no hope for you now. The horror of the crucifixion is still fresh in your mind. You see and hear him in agony there, dying right in front of you, when there was nothing you could do. You think about your part in all of it, and wonder what you could have done differently. You have been frightened and hiding for days, but now it's Sunday. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. <laughs> then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? At 
this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, So if you are the boy, don't worry about the looking, so I will go get him. Mary. Rabbani. In Aramaic, the word Rabbani means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go and said to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didmus, meaning twin, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord! Thomas says, Unless I have seen the nail marks in his side and the fingernails, uh, the nails in his fingers, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put them into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas says, My Lord, my God. Jesus says, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Imagine yourself in the best of all possible situations. The Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ, who is dead, is now alive again. By the power of the living God, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and is alive forever. The terror of yesterday is gone, and the fear of tomorrow has vanished. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, oh sorry. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, mankind can be forgiven of sin. And because he has been raised from the dead, mankind can live forever. There is no doubt. We have a hope. We have a future. God bless you and happy Easter. Jesus is alive. Happy Easter.
Jesus Christ, we greet you. Your hands still have holes in them. Your feet are wet from the dew. And with the memory of our names undimmed by three days of death, you met us risen from the grave. We fail to understand how. We puzzle at the reason why. But you have come not to answer our questions, but to show us your face. You are alive, and the world can rejoice again. Hallelujah. Amen. What Easter means to me is a time in spring uh, when uh, life is uh, reborn, when Jesus sacrificed all so that we may forgive everybody's sins and live forever. Easter to me means love. Jesus sacrificed his life to pay the debt of sin in full, and that is the biggest expression of love God could ever give. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sustainer, en nom du Père, du Fils et du Saint-Esprit, je vous invite à prier avec moi. Vieille, agréé mes paroles et la méditation de nos corps, au éternel mon rocher, mon libérateur. Amen. This morning, our youth have done a wonderful job to tell us the story of Jesus' resurrection as we encounter it in the Gospel of John. John's Gospel is truly unique and distinctive amongst the four Gospels. It's a little strange and sometimes even a little funky. It contains some of our favorite stories that are told nowhere else. Now, while the other Gospels might start the story of Jesus' life talking about his birth, no, 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 John starts his Gospel as such. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In the beginning, John's gospel echoes the beginning of the book of Genesis, where God sets the world into motion over the course of six days. And once God finishes God's work on the sixth day, God rested on the seventh day. So this morning, I want to focus just a moment on the events of the last week of Jesus' life before the crucifixion. Now remember, for our Jewish brothers and sisters, the first day of the week is Sunday. On Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that little donkey to the shouts of praise and cries of Hosanna from the crowds who gathered along the way just to catch a glimpse of this great teacher and prophet. The crowd spread their cloaks and palm branches before Jesus and that little donkey, and we now celebrate that first day of Passion Week as Palm Sunday. On Monday, Jesus entered the temple and overturned the tables of the vendors and the money changers. On Tuesday, he again returns to the temple where he is bombarded with questions throughout the day, such as, by whose authority are you doing these things? Should we pay Roman taxes? What is the greatest commandment? And Jesus responds with scripture and counter questions and parables. Wednesday finds Jesus in the nearby village of Bethany, dining at the home of Simon the leper. There, a woman anoints his head with rare perfume, setting in motion Judas's betrayal. Thursday is spent in meal preparation, prayer, and ultimately Jesus' arrest. A day of the Last Supper that we remember through our Monday Thursday service. That brings us to Friday. That brings us to Friday, the sixth day. 
Friday is a cacophony of trials ending with Jesus' crucifixion on the cross and the burial. The last thing Jesus says before he gives up his life is, it is finished. His work is finished. Jesus finishes his work on that sixth day just as God finished creation on the sixth day. And once Jesus is finished, he rested in the silence of Holy Saturday. As we heard Cassie read for us this morning, chapter 20 of John's Gospel begins early on the first day of the week. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Couldn't our author have just said, just as easily said, on Saturday, on Sunday? Jesus dies on the sixth day of the week, the same day in which humanity was created in Genesis, and he rests in the ground on the seventh day, just as God rested, and then is resurrected on the first day of a new week, or, to say it in another way, Jesus' resurrection happens on the eighth day, or the first day of a new kind of week. The theologian and scholar Tom Wright, in his book, Surprised by Hope, describes it like this. Easter functions as the beginning of a new creation. The Word, through whom all things were made, is now the Word, through whom all things are remade. Jesus' resurrection is seen as the beginning of the new world, the first day of a new week, the unveiling of the prototype of what God is now doing to accomplish the rest of creation. When Jesus walks out of that tomb on that first Easter morning, hope for something more invades reality. God in Christ begins a whole new creation in the midst of the world's brokenness. There's one more detail in John's account that we heard this morning that I find really interesting to this concept of the new beginning. Mary Magdalene stood outside the tomb weeping when she mistakes Jesus for the gardener. Now, back in our Genesis creation story, God created the garden, planted the trees and all the growing things. God is the gardener. Now we have a new gardener. When Jesus walks out of the tomb, he presents in the garden, his presence in the garden announces that we are now reconciled with God Almighty. Jesus calls us not to weep as though we have no hope, but to live in light for the new week, for a new week of creation that he inaugurates. Christ is risen. Christ is risen means a whole new creation has been born in the midst of this old one. Oh, my friends, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Amen. Please pray with me. Astounding God, very early on that first day, you caught chaos unawares, planting grace in the garden, setting love loose on creation, flinging joy into the air. Very early on that first day, you confounded death, leaving it alone in the grave. You opened the gates to the kingdom so all could follow you into life. Very early on this first day of the week, while we are wash washing sleep from our eyes and trying to make sense of our lives, you sing a song of songs to us, rolling away fears from our heart so that we can see the risen Lord. Oh, very early on the first day of this week, as we do on every day of our lives, we lift our prayers as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
God of eternal love, we thank you for the joy of Easter morning. We are grateful for the peace that flows from the risen Christ. We have been on a journey of faith through Lent where we arrived at the passion of our Lord. We remember the long road to Jerusalem and how fragile life is. We have experienced the solemnness of the Passover supper. We have the images of Judas betraying his master, Peter denying him and the others deserting him. We have also experienced the darkness of Good Friday and the story of Christ's suffering and death upon the cross. But this morning, light breaks in. Christ has been raised from the tomb. The power of death and sin have been defeated. Hope has triumphed over despair. Love has conquered hatred and evil. Help us to embrace the gospel of God and to share it as the dark places that we encounter on our faith journey. Free us from all that would keep us from hearing the stunning, startling good news. The tomb is empty. Christ is alive. We have nothing to fear. Liberate us from any bondage that would keep us from living life fully and release us from anything that would keep us from celebrating your love for us and for the entire world. Thank you, God, for the new life of Easter. The old is gone and the new is here. The cross and grave are empty. Christ is not there anymore. Instead, he is among us, in us, above us, and ahead of us, inviting us to live the abundant life he came to give. Help us to accept your extravagant grace and to share wherever you go. This we pray in the name of the reason and the living Christ. Amen.
now go out into the world in peace. Have courage, hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord bring you peace this Easter morning. Amen. Amen.